We all know who Judas was. Judas Iscariot was a disciple and one of the original 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. According to all four canonical gospels, Judas betrayed Jesus to the Sanhedrin in the Garden of Gethsemane by kissing him and addressing him as rabbi to reveal his identity in the darkness to the crowd who had come to arrest him. His name is often used synonymously with betrayal or treason. However, today I would like to share with you something very disturbing that is connected to the character of Judas and more specifically to the way he died and how it affected the land of Israel. There are two accounts about the death of Judas. First is in Matthew 27 verses 3 to 10 and the second one is in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. In Matthew 27 we read that Judas hanged himself while Luke records that Judas falling headlong burst open in the middle and all his entrails gashed out. So how did Judas die? Well, it's possible that both accounts are true. On the first day of Passover, which is after the first night of Passover, the priests at the temple had to perform a special Passover sacrifice. But wait a minute, did I say that the Passover day follows the Passover night? How is that even possible? Well, in the Jewish system, a new day begins at sundown and not sunrise. All the biblical holidays begin at sundown. And so, it is possible to have a day after night in the Jewish chronology. I mention that because sometimes the chronology of the biblical account is questioned. But if we follow the Jewish, or to be even more accurate, the biblical understanding of time, then everything makes sense. But let's return to Judas. As we know, he committed a suicide after his betrayal of Yeshua. However, if there was a dead body within the Jerusalem walls, according to the Jewish law, the priests could not proceed with the Passover sacrifice. So to deal with that problem, you would have to take the dead body and throw it over the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. Once this is done, the sacrifice can be performed. And so, when Judas' plea to return the money he received for betraying Jesus was rejected by the priest, he went and hanged himself. His dead body would then need to be thrown out from the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. The impact of the hit would cause his entrails to gush out. And so, the understanding of the Jewish customs help us to explain how Judas died. First, he hanged himself and then was thrown from the city walls into the valley of Hinnom. But that's not all. There is another controversy concerning the purchase of the field where Judas was buried. In the account of Matthew, we read that it was the priests who bought the field while Luke writes that it was Judas who purchased it. So who was it? According to the Jewish law, the money gained from a work that resulted in a spilling of blood could not be put into the temple treasury. This is why Judas' money was rejected by the priests as Matthew records. Why? because this money was used to bring Yeshua to his death on the cross. And so, this money had to be returned to the donor. Therefore, in this situation, the priest purchased the field with the money belonging to Judas. They could not return the money to Judas since he was already dead. And so again, understanding the Jewish law can help us understand that biblical authors do not contradict themselves. But I still did not explain what is so disturbing about Judas' death. In the Gospel of Matthew, we also read a very mysterious words. In Matthew 27, 9, we read that the death of Judas fulfilled the prophecy given by Jeremiah. 
no specific verse from Jeremiah is given. And so, how are we to interpret that? Many biblical commentators say this is just a mistake done by the author and he really meant the prophet Isaiah or Zechariah and not Jeremiah because he does not mention anything specific about Judah's betrayal. But is that true? Well, the answer may be found in Jeremiah chapter 19. There was a section in Jerusalem called Tophet, which is a point where the Hinnon Valley and the Kidron Valley meet. This was a very dark place where in the Old Testament times people used to practice human sacrifice. Because of this evil practice, God, through the mouth of Jeremiah, foretells a judgment. In Jeremiah chapter 19 verses 11 to 15 we read, And shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people in this city, as one breaketh a potter's vessel, that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Tophet, till there be no place to bury. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. And so, According to this prophecy in Jeremiah, God announces that the whole Jerusalem will become like the despised place of Tophet where rebellious Jewish people were committing human sacrifices. Tophet became a synonym for Gehenna, Gen Hinnom, Valley of Hinnom, which is compared by biblical authors to hell on earth. Just like in hell, humans will burn in the lake of fire, so in Tophet, people were burned in the sacrifice to false gods. So how was this prophecy of Jeremiah fulfilled? It is possible that the prophecy of Jerusalem doom was fulfilled in AD 70, when Romans destroyed Jerusalem. How? Well. After the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, there were so many corpses that there simply was no place to bury the dead bodies. Josephus claims that 1.1 million people were killed during the siege, of which a majority were Jewish. So according to Matthew, when this field in Tophet was purchased, it announced the coming judgment of Jeremiah. The place was from that moment known as Akeldema, which means field of blood from Aramaic. The early church father Papias of Herapolis recorded in his expositions of the sayings of the Lord that when Judas killed entrails went into the ground, the place started to stank so horribly that even in Papias own time, a century later, people still could not pass the site without holding their breath. We are not sure if this is true or just an exaggeration, but Tophet, the center of the Valley of Hinnom, was certainly a dark place. Child sacrifice at other Tophets contemporary with the Bible accounts that 700 to 600 BC of the reign of Ahaz and Manasseh have been established, such as the bones of children sacrificed at the Tophet to the goddess Tanit in the Phoenician Carthage. Many scholars have concluded 
that the sacrifices recorded in the Hebrew Bible, such as Jeremiah's comment that the worshippers of Baal had filled this place with the blood of the innocent, is literal. No archaeological evidence such as mass children graves have been found. However, it has been suggested that such a find may be compromised by the heavy population history of the Jerusalem area compared to the tofets found in Tunisia. We must also remember that the site would also have been disturbed by the actions of Josiah who defiled Tophet, which is the valley of the children of Hinnon, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode, even though it was a little bit disturbing. Soon we are entering a time when Christians and Jewish people will celebrate very important holidays. Jewish people will celebrate the holiday of Passover while the Christians will celebrate the passion, death and resurrection of Yeshua. Therefore, in this special time, I decided to produce special videos that will be covering the last days of Yeshua in Jerusalem. I hope those videos will help you to better understand the realities of the first century Jerusalem and get you closer to celebrate those holidays. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, you hit that notification button and stay alert because more videos are coming in this series. Also, if you think that my work is helpful, I kindly ask you to think about supporting my channel that will help me to even more develop this work. You can do that by joining the Israel My Channel. This is done by clicking the button on the main channel page right here. So once again, thank you for listening and see you soon. Shalom.